Bjorn Lomborg, the internationally acclaimed president of the think tank, the Copenhagen Consensus Centre, issued a warning at the, end, at the end of only last month. Now, he's no climate denier. He's saying it's the way we're going about it. And he argued that energy costs have increased by 26% across industrialised economies last year and will rise globally by another 50% this year. To the argument that's all about the Russian war on Ukraine, wrote Lomborg, quote, prices were already rising because of climate policies designed to choke fossil fuel investment. Sensibly went on, huge price rises are the inevitable result of forcing more energy out of an increasingly starved system. And he wrote, the climate policy approach of trying to push consumers and businesses away from fossil fuels with price spikes is causing pain with little climate payoff. He wrote, solar and wind are still only capable of meeting a fraction of global electricity needs, unquote. And accurately, he said, even with huge subsidies and political support, solar and wind delivered just 9% of global electricity in 2020. He wrote, Germany's on track to spend more than half a trillion dollars on climate policies by 2025, yet has only managed to reduce fossil fuel dependency from 84% in 2000 to 77% today. Well, Keith Pitt joins me and he has been making those very points. Keith, thank you for your time. But here we've got legislation mandating a 43% reduction, which implies 82% of electricity from renewables by 2030. Don't tell me the coalition is going to support this stuff. Well, it's good to be with you, Alan, and the short answer is no, I won't be supporting it, I know that. <laughs> uh, but it's not over yet. It's got to go across to the Senate. I'm sure they'll make changes with the Greens. It'll come back with another number. Uh, but once again, I mean, everyone's talking about 40%, 42%, 45%. No one's talking about what the real, the real issue is, and that is how much will it cost and who's paying? And we know it's the Australian people that will have to pay. Uh, and th this is just madness. To legislate this, to now have the courts look at every single project across the country to see if it meets those criteria, it's really dangerous. Very dangerous. Bjorn Lomborg said rightly, three quarters of the 21st century's emissions will come from China in their African Latin America. And they won't accept slower economic growth to address a 2% problem 50 years from now. Keith, I mean, how come the mob in Canberra don't understand this? Well, we keep hearing that this is a global challenge and you've got you know, the UK and others have all shored their manufacturing. That's been picked up by China. Uh, India is really struggling into manufacturing as well. They're not going to give up their competitive advantage. It's only the West that's making those sorts of decisions. I mean, yeah. Australia is a 1% contributor. Uh, As absolutely. I've said many well, times, Al, I just yeah, want to see yeah, we, uh, uh, our response I know. be proportional to our contribution. But see, I mean, Lomborg has made this point that if we want to talk zero emissions by 2050, it will cost 16% of GDP. For us, that's $300 billion a year. Uh, it's absurd. Oh, it's, it's way more than that. I mean, AEMO's estimates are around $360 billion just in the electricity network. Yes. And that won't get you there. It'll be a trillion dollars. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, and where does that come from? It's all those hardworking mums and dads. It's the ones yeah. that don't have a lot of dispensable cash. It's the ones that have to buy second-hand cars. They can't buy a new electric car even with a subsidy. Unbelievable. Your colleague, Matt Canavan, has said that once we saw the energy catastrophe here and in Europe, net zero should have been all over by the shouting. I mean, Keith, you and I have talked about this before. We've got 2,000 years of coal under our feet and technology is improving every day. Why wouldn't we join countries like Vietnam, South Korea, Japan, and India in building high efficiency, low emissions coal-fired power stations? Well, that's exactly right. I mean, they're buying our coal to run yeah. those exact facilities yes. because it's high quality and they can get it and it's close and we're incredibly reliable. Technology makes a difference. I mean, uh, even the International Energy Agency says uh, you know, a Healy coal plant uh, combined with CCS is a 90% reduction in emissions. Well, that'll do me. Uh, it'll work when you push the go button. You don't have to worry about the weather. Just go and ask any farmer. If you rely on the weather for an outcome, you just never know what's going to happen. Absolutely. And I know as a minister, you made the point that since 2005, we've reduced our emissions more quickly than Canada, Japan, New Zealand and the United States. If reducing emissions was important, which I don't think it is, carbon dioxide is a source of all plant life.